Hello everyone and welcome to round number 8 of the Formula Sim Racing World Championship for 2020 and for the first time ever we are here for the Dutch Grand Prix. We've never been to Zandvoort ever in the past but it has now been recently um, introduced and updated into R Factor 2 so for the official R Factor 2 Open World Championship we are here. For your series sponsored by Simlab, 3D Rap and IMB Racewear. Cameron Roger here for you today alongside me we got uh, Ewan O'Leary and how are you doing Ewan? I'm doing great thanks I'm very excited to be here once again as you said the first Dutch Grand Prix uh, of, in any circuit and um, the first race here for FSR at Zandvoort as well, so interesting to see how it's going to play out, as we were mentioning just beforehand. Not expecting there to be a, a load of overtaking, but strategy is going to be very, very important. It certainly is. You could definitely overtake here, especially with the, the new banking in that final corner. That makes it almost like an oval coming onto the start-finish straight. It gives you a really good run. And in the Pro and Academy race earlier, we've seen some really good racing. However, it is mostly being dictated by the tyre strategy because it is quite a high tyre wear track. So being on the right tyre at the right time is very crucial, especially considering how, how short and how quick this lap is. You really need that tyre grip to help you through the corners. But yeah, 72 laps there, as you see on the screen, shortest um, track on the calendar, 4.259 kilometres. And some important facts are Yerne Simicic can win the championship here today if all goes well however he will need Peter Berlak to have a pretty bad race and this is what they are driving 976 horsepower 370 kph top speed although I don't think we're quite going to get that around the high downforce track like this but also that race and quality boost is going to be all important when trying to make those overtakes yeah, it definitely is indeed. Probably your only saving grace in terms of trying to make an overtake. But as you said, Cam, we're definitely going to see overtakes being made throughout this race. This is what they're playing for, uh, by the way, as you can see on the screen from 3D Wrap, SimLab and IMB Racewear. And also €3,000 in cash to split between the teams uh, in based on their points. Um, so, so it's uh, basically divided up from what points. So every point matters, as we say every week. Um, and these guys definitely will be fighting for it very hard. I'm hoping that we're going to see um, some nice lunges and all sorts of action going on. I'm sure we will do because we normally do in FSR. And uh, yeah, as I said, this week is going to be no different, I'm sure. Yeah, but what happened last time out? We had the German Grand Prix. Jernie Simicic got the win from Petter Berlach after a pretty fierce fight. Petter led the race for about half of the race, but Jernie, as always, getting that strategy perfect and overtaking after quite a, a bit of a battle. Michi Hoyer overtaking his teammate David Mocek to get on the podium as well. So yeah, it was a very good German Grand Prix and we're looking forward to see what can happen. But here is the standings. Jernie Simicic has got pretty decent lead, especially after Petter had that DNF in Portugal a few races ago. So 29 points. So he needs to gain 21 points to win the championship here. Again, it is unlikely, but if that situation comes up during the race, we will obviously let you know. And in the constructors, Evolution have dropped off a little bit, so it's a direct fight between the two burst teams now. However, Edge are getting very close for that podium position in the constructors as well. So yeah, plenty of stuff to play for for these teams. As we now go into the qualifying session, the first couple of laps have gone in and it's Dennis Jordan who's leading the way at the moment with a 5.77. And we're now on board with Yerne Simicic who's done a purple first sector on a 28.6. And now he's coming out onto this first of the DRS zones. It's a, it's a little straight, but there's a nice hard braking zone after it. So overtaking is definitely possible into this really tricky little chicane. And then by the time you get to this point in the lap, you only really have one corner left. Flick it in, fifth or sixth gear into this one, flat out. And just as you get off the banking, you open up DRS to go to the line. And what can he do? Where can he put himself on his first flying lap? He goes to provisional pole position on a 5.5, leading by almost three tenths of a second. That is a good lap there from Simicic. Yeah, that's a pretty huge margin in FSR terms. And if you've never seen Zandvoort before, then uh, you better get on the edge of your seat because this is extremely fast around here. As you can see at the moment, just over a minute in terms of the lap time. We've got Mohamed Patel coming to the line right now. Where is he going to go? Probably going to slot himself into that top five. And he does indeed with a fourth position on a 5.8, uh, I believe that was. And uh, here's Thomas Vack as well. But yeah, as I said, very, very fast circuit. And 
to keep these guys concentration up for 72 laps around here is going to be extremely impressive because things are coming at you so fast and the corners just keep on coming uh, really relentlessly uh, to be honest um, so the concentration levels are going to have to be super high in this race and um, we are definitely going to see mistakes and the consequences are pretty big around here they certainly are. I mean, I just had a quite an awesome race in the pro race just a few minutes ago. And really, as you said, to keep the concentration, I mean, that race was 58 laps. And even just that was hard enough. These guys have got to go an extra 14 laps beyond that. So I'm sure we're going to see a very interesting race. And um, as well as I'm looking uh, quite forward to it. But we've got Craig Bax on the screen. And as you can see, Singularity have got a nice... Uh, Dutch themed skin they've changed the green for the uh, the orange so yeah representing the Dutch drivers as uh, Jordi Zwiers is the uh, team manager of the Singularity FSR team and obviously being a Dutchman himself wants to represent as we're now seeing Craig Baxter come around the corner but I believe he is about to start his next flying lap so we'll see what he is able to remember he got second place back in Azure yeah, he did very well back there in that uh, in that race there, and another track there as uh, where qualifying is super super important. We're going to see uh, qualifying be quite important here, not quite as uh, Azure levels of important, you understand, but it's still uh, pretty good to get yourself into that top onto those first couple of rows of the grid. Um, and uh, obviously, as I said, Azure very very important, not quite as much here, but still pretty important as uh, he just says a 27, uh, uh, sorry 28.7 in the first sector doesn't look quite as glued to the road as Simoncic though and um, I'm not sure many people can say that indeed but uh, we're going to see what Craig Baxter's got here um, in terms of his qualifying and uh, yeah see if he can even better that second place that he got back uh, in the Azure race at uh, round number five and what can he do it's in the meantime Dennis Jordan has gone to pole position on a 5.5 uh, almost match, almost pretty much the same time as Yanni Simicic, so those two are miles away and championship rival Berlak in third place. What can Baxter do as he comes to the line, a 6.1 stays in uh, uh, seventh place there. Now Alex Siebel out of the final corner, what is he doing on his lap? Couple of personal bests so far, where he's going to put himself, he's going to go up to fourth place. So the two Evolution Motorsports in the top four. Yeah, they're both doing very well at the moment. And Dennis Jordan, a fantastic lap from him there with a 5.5. Uh, Petr Berliak also came over the line almost uh, simultaneously with Craig Baxter just then. He improved his time, but he's still only third. Oh, dearie me, Thomas Vack off the road there for HM Engineering. And he's straight back to the pit lane. Uh, not impressed with that one, I'm afraid. But Mohamed Patel seems to be a little bit more uh, accustomed to this. Well, not accustomed, but he seems a little bit more comfortable out there. At the moment, he's just about to cross the uh, second sector line and uh, we'll see really what he can do with this uh, little chicane. And then the final couple of corners now. See if he can get anywhere near the top two because the uh, Jordan and Simoncic look uh, a class above everyone else right now. We'll see if anyone can infiltrate that front row of the grid. Remember, Patel unfortunately had a disconnect last time out, which is also what helped Mitchie Hoyer get onto that podium. But yeah, third place there. Yone Simicic, surprise, surprise. Purple in that first sector. Personal best in the middle sector, but about a tenth, or about half a tenth, I should say, just off what Dennis oh. Jordan can do. Oh, he goes spinning around the final corner. So, And I believe that, oh no, Yone's still got one more lap to do. So he will have enough time. I thought that was his final lap, but no, he does have one more. As we see Mashuli come to line, he's moved to the HM Engineering yellow team, replacing Kirill Birikov, who has unfortunately had to uh, take a step back. And are we getting a nice little replay here of what Yanis Simicic is going to do? Just pushing a little bit too hard coming into this third sector all over that curb in the chicane. And then what's he going to do? Come out of the final corner. Just nudges that inside curb. Yeah, a little bit too much. His rear left got in the gravel. And unfortunately, that is going to be him having to abandon that lap. And Michi Hoya has finally made it into the server. He was having a couple of uh, issues, but he's managed to get in. So he will get enough time to do one lap. But unfortunately, uh, Luis Felipe Capamadjan for Grand Effect is also having a couple issues here and there. So I don't know if he is going to make it, but we will see as the drivers now build up for their final laps. Yeah, you can see on the bottom right hand side of your screen right now, it's getting very busy out there. Most of those guys are on outlaps at the moment. As you can see, Petr Berliak is one of them. 
Um, so we'll really see what these guys have got. But as you can see, just to, coming through the S section right now, it's getting uh, it's getting pretty busy right now. Obviously, these guys won't have traffic to deal with because these guys are in their own private session. So they've basically got the track to themselves. And we just take the pick of who we really want to watch. And in this case, it's uh, the number 97, Petr Berliak. And uh, he's coming down towards turn number one. A pretty important lap this is for him in terms of the championship. It could be defining. He needs to get at least one point, uh, sorry, one place behind Simicic if he wants to kind of mark him and beat him in this race, although that's not going very well at all. He's all over the grass and he's going to be out of time in this session. Yeah, he's really, oh yeah, abandons that one. He is going to really need the, um, well, not really um, direct help as such, but people such as Jordan, Patel, etc. getting involved with Simicic is really what he needs. And being a fourth place is fairly good, but what can David Mocek do? He's had a couple of uh, podiums already this season. Can he improve his ninth place at the moment? What is he doing on his lap? He's on a personal best middle sector, so he has the potential to make some gains. Doesn't go wide like his sister teammate Yerni. Simicic, and now he comes to the line. All he can do now is stay flat out. Where is he going to put himself? Sixth place for the number six. Yeah, that's a good lap time from him. Here's Mohamed Patel. Can he knock any of the top two off of their front row right now? Flying through the penultimate corner. A little bit of a slide on the exit, but he's going to need a two-tenth improvement right now. If he wants to get the pole from Dennis Jordan, he cuts into the pit lane. Clearly not impressed with that lap time. But where's Jone Simicic? I think he's already crossed the line. I think he's solidly in second place. Yeah, he actually abandoned that lap. Michi Hoyer on his one and only lap got 16th on the grid so that's quite a way for him to come back from as well. So yeah so your pole position today is Dennis Jordan and I believe that is his and Evolution Motorsports first ever pole position in the Formula Sim Racing World Championship but they're obviously looking pretty good with Siebel in fifth as well but the all-important person is Petr Berlek in fourth place can he beat Simicic here today that is the real big question he's going to need a very good start if he wants to do it he's going to be lining up right behind him on the grid and um, so uh, if you think about this because they're two and four and uh, they're going to have Mohamed Patel who I think is uh, a really good pick for this race because he's got no championship affiliations he's, uh, his team's not really in the constructors he can just go for race wins he can do whatever he likes really it doesn't matter if he finishes uh, second or last he really just wants to win these races right now because he's not in any championship so those are the kind of guys that are very dangerous to Simincic and Berliak who really want to stay out of trouble well, the drivers just do a bit of a warm session in the background we'll take a quick track guide from the one and only Mitchie Hoyer this is Formula Sim Racing. My name is Mitchie Hoyer and I welcome you guys to today's track presentation here at Sunford for the Netherlands Grand Prix. After a short three week break, the Formula Sim Racing 2020 season is back underway with the Netherlands Grand Prix. The track has been rebuilt. We are out on the updated 2020 year version of the track so a new turn one a new turn three and a new final part of the track leaving pit road turn two you don't want to come too far to the outside because you want to stay somewhere here in the middle for turn three due to the banking that has been introduced into the track going over well it is a chain of corners but in this car you really feel it like a straight before you hit down turn seven downhill right hander easy to leave the track here so be careful into turn eight a right hander that you stay in right hand steering before increasing the right hand steering into turn nine and a direction change straight into turn 10 with a late apex going into the first drs zone or the second drs zone however you want to see it uh, with a short sprint up to the resurfaced and redone chicane I want to stay all the way up to the inside kissing the curb here and then so important it has been the penultimate corner but to me now it is the ultimate corner as this one is easy flat out no hustle thanks to the banking DRX wide open and across the line we are starting the flying presentation lap still lay into turn one it's not as much banking as before but still you want to enter it from the middle carry all the speed on the exit then carry speed through two but don't go too wide as you want to stay somewhere like this in the middle here for turn three 
kissing the exit curb, carrying all the speed on the sprint up to the downhill right hander, which can be done with a slight lift and a double downshift immediately back on the throttle, kissing the curb and then fluidly, smoothly into turn 8, 9 and then into turn 10. Car needs to be very good on the balance and goes nicely around the corners. DRS wide open, a little bit of a wiggle here as we come to the new chicane hard on the brakes stay really all the way up to the inside here don't want to touch the exit curb too much there and then the final turn late on the steering early on the throttle carry all the speed over the curb and then open DRS again to do your attack on the car ahead that is one flying lap here around the Sanford circuit and uh, yeah whoever driver will master the new challenges and the new lines around here and be on the top we will see that 1400 for ACA 1630 for pro and 1900 all times GMT for the world championship drivers And welcome back to round eight of the Formula Sim Racing World Championship for 2020. Brought, brought to you by SimLab 3D Wrap and IMB Raceway here for the first time for the Dutch Grand Prix. And in qualifying, it was Dennis Jordan who's got the pole position. And you and I think we're going to be looking at a very interesting race. We've got Dennis and Yerni on the front row, but then following behind are the two world champions of Patel and Berlag. I think this is going to be set up for a great Grand Prix. Yeah, it is going to be a, a, an edge of your seat Grand Prix really where you can't really uh, go away at any moment because something is bound to happen and it's really going to be an evolving story this one with all the strategies going on and um, that's going to be a very key talking point throughout this race and not making a mistake I think is going to be particularly important because um, this circuit is really fast and it's really hard to keep it on the track at all times uh, which these guys are going to need to so yeah it's going to be a very interesting race and 72 laps is quite a long way around here um, so uh, yeah, going to be an interesting race and yeah, looking forward to it. Definitely going to be an interesting one indeed. The I'm just interested to see how the race dynamics are going to are going to work. Obviously, we saw, especially last time out in Nurburgring, there was sort of this this biggish sort of train at at the beginning because Yerne. Uh, on that occasion was in pole position but then he went really slowly in that first stint and that just backed everyone up behind but I think here we might see some people well, I think we're going to see most people actually do a three stop strategy which means you should be able to push quite a lot and maybe from the outset we're going to see the train um, spread out quite a bit more than usual but the grid is just being set and unfortunately I think Luis Felipe Capamachan is unfortunately not going to be able to get into the race so we only have 21 cars here for you today however well, it's actually interesting that's uh chris shepherd is fastest in the warm-up session which is uh quite interesting because he's had a couple of struggles this year but either way i think we're going to be getting an awesome race when this gets going yeah, we definitely are, and the championship is something we're going to refer to quite a lot. There are still five guys mathematically in contention for this one, they being Simoncic, Berliak, Hoyer, Mrochnik and Siebel. They're all um, mathematically, as I said, in contention for this title, but really we're thinking about a two-horse race here between Jörne Simoncic and Petr Berliak. 29 points separates them, and you've got to think that with only three rounds to go, including this one, Berliak is going to have to start taking some points from Simoncic, and that means doing something fancy in this race um, because on average if he wants to win this he's going to need to take 10 points out of the burst esport driver every race from here on in if he loses points here today then uh, he's got a real mountain to climb and i don't know if he's going to be able to manage it um, but uh, yeah we'll just have to see how this race pans out really as i said before the break or before hoyer's track guide um i, I really think that Mahmoud patel could be a bit of a an oddball in this race and really uh, make Simoncic and Berliak a bit nervous up the front of the field. Yeah, this is going to be very, very interesting. I mean, there's a lot of sort of side story to this as well, because um, with the way that the, the rules work in FSR, um, you're only allowed to do team orders within your own team 
or your sister team and there's a there's a whole process where the team owners have to um declare who their sister team is and the, interestingly despite for instance like patel and burlak being friends they're not sister teams so they can't they they cannot help each other in any way the same for um Dennis Jordan and Yele Simicic, obviously we know that they're friends as well, however, they have to fight it out on track and that is exactly what we've seen over the last few races between those guys, which is great, but it is quite interesting with how it's how it's worked out and what teams that they're driving in, that they can't actually help each other. So Dennis is going to have to push um, at the front, which is, you know, he can potentially take points off Yene here today, which is going to really help Petr Berlak. And if Petr can get ahead of Yene, then that is exactly what he needs. If he loses points here today, as you say, it is going to be unbelievably difficult for him to win this but who knows we've got still got three races left including this one plenty of action and as you see here is your grid the only change to this is tom sadly had a two-place grid penalty so he's actually dropped to 11th so we thomas vac in uh, ninth robin panzar in 10th while robin will be able to start on a different compound of tires as he qualified 11th and tom Tom Savoli will have to uh, start on the. Oh, sorry. So <laughs> Tom Savoli will have to start on the uh, soft compound tyres because he qualified inside the top ten. Even though he's not going to start there, he still has to use those soft compound tyres, which is might be a bit of a disadvantage to him. But with that uh, extra uh, or the three stop strategies that we may be seeing today, it might not matter quite as much. It might not, but we will have to see what they do. In theory, a two stop is possible. But you're going to have to save those hard tyres. You're going to have to do soft, hard, hard. And that's going to be quite difficult because you're going to be very slow. And it is definitely possible to overtake here. So I'm going to assume most people are going to push for a three-stop strategy. But who knows? Dennis Jordan and Yannis Simcic, the front row of the grid. If you're going to back anyone to do a long strategy, it's going to be both of those two. So I think the dynamics of the strategy is going to be really interesting here. But as I mentioned, you can overtake, which is very good to see because there could be some uh, some little dives into that turn number one. I just can't wait to see what these guys do because it's such a fun track. Um, it was a little bit uh, well, it's controversial when put on the calendar because obviously this car is unbelievably quick. But it has proven in the pro and the academy race to be a very good site for a race. And yeah, I think for the first time ever, we're going to see a, a really good Dutch Grand Prix. And this is a really slow outlap or formation up, I should say, by Dennis Jordan. Yeah, not really sure what the objective is here. I can see him staying in eighth gear, as you can see on your screen on the onboard right now. Um, saving a bit of fuel, probably, and uh, not really sure what he's doing with his tyres, though, because I can imagine they're getting a little bit uh, frosty right now. Um, with how cold they are, but um, yeah, it's a very slow. And I, I know that Simoncic, or I've noticed in the last couple of races, or at, at least at the Nurburgring, Simoncic likes to do a bit of a fast out lap. So uh, yeah, it, uh, sorry, a formation lap. So interesting that we're going quite so slowly on this particular occasion. But one talking point we haven't quite mentioned uh, very much yet is uh, Mitchy Hoyer being all the way down in 16th position. He's had a bit of a stressful evening so far, trying to get logged into the server. So he's finally in now. And he's got a big job on his hands to get any points from down there. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's gonna he's going to be a talking point throughout this race. Um, and he's going to really be a marker for how easy or hard the overtaking is going to be in this race. Um, because he's got a lot of work to do, even though arguably he's going to be faster than a lot of the guys in front of him. And that alternate strategy could work out pretty well. In the pro race, I started 12th and managed to get up to 4th. So it is certainly possible starting on those hard compound tyres if you can stay on the back of the train of all these soft runners. But it looks like everyone is pretty much gridded up. Everyone is on softs down to 11th place, Tom Sadley. And then it's pretty much uh, hard and medium after that, as you would expect. And now we are lining up for the five red lights. Dennis Jordan... On pole position, what can he do next to Yerne Simicic? Can he lead down into turn number one? He pulls away rather nicely, but I guess he's got a good start. It's Mohamed Patel from that second row. He's going to pull in and get third place as Pes Berlak is actually dropping down a little bit. There's a couple of collisions in the background as well, but I think everyone is getting through fairly safely. And Alex Siebel has actually got past Petr Berlak as well. So Petr has dropped down into fifth position as the leaders are fighting. Yerne Simicic has got past Dennis Jordan. So Yerne already got himself up into the lead of the race. 
That is the perfect start for Yoni Simicic. A fantastic launch and down the inside of Dennis Jordan. He's managed to get into first position and even better for him. To Berliak has fallen back behind Alex Siebel in the Evolution Motorsports car. You can see him already trying to get back up the inside into that right-hander, but it's going to be difficult from here. Berliak is going to need a bit of an overtaking masterclass if he wants to get on the podium here today. I'm sure it is definitely possible, though, as we're seeing in the background here. There's all sorts of things going on. Jordi Zviers is involved in it, but Michi Hoyer, by the way, made a fantastic start there. Three positions for him off the start. Very good indeed, and Craig Baxter's without a front wing, so he's going to have to come in for some damage repairs. That is really going to hinder what he can do. But as we finish lap number one here for the first time in FSR history around this circuit, it is Yerne Simicic leading the way from Dennis Jordan, and this is really what Yerne needed. He needed to get in that lead in the front, and now it's down to people such as Mohamed Patel and Alex Siebel oh! to try and challenge. Jos Araneda has just come together with Chris Shepard, I think. Oh, and he's just reversed into somebody. He's lost his front right wheel there. I believe he just turned into a Doherty down at the back of the field. And he's lost his front wing now. So a bit of a disaster there. And the yellow flag in sector one briefly. But yeah, we've just seen turn one is a very fast corner. Despite it being basically a hairpin, it is still very fast. And incidents still can definitely happen. And now we've seen two retirements already. That is such a shame for those couple of drivers, especially Lorenz as he unfortunately had to start from the pit lane as he is replacing your own Quickle for this uh, for this event. But let's see, Jos Araneda, and as you said, this was uh, Chris Shepard that he is next to getting the slipstream down towards turn number one side by side. What is going to happen on the apex? Uh, that's really difficult to see actually. Maybe Chris didn't quite leave Jos enough space and then Lorenz nowhere to go. Unfortunately, is out of the race as well. So there's 19 drivers left in this race as we've completed the first two laps of this race. Yeah, we have now and that is a real unfortunate one for those guys down at the back in Aranade. I feel like he could have uh, got on the kerb and got to the inside just a little bit more. Um, otherwise, for me, that's just a bit of a racing incident, really. But Chris Shepard seems to have got away with it unscathed. He's P15 at the moment, trying to make some progress uh, past some of those guys in front of him. But back up the front, it is still as you were, really. We've got the top nine for the second round in a row in one long line behind Yoni Simicic. He's just playing with these guys. Once again, like we saw at the Nürburgring, just holding everyone up. And I would have thought he would have used this opportunity to try and get as much distance between him and Berliak, but it seems that he's pretty content to just run his own race and even back everyone up into one long train at the moment. Yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess that they might sit like this for a few laps, but Yene, I mean, he doesn't look like he's going overly slow. Uh, we can see what the lap time is as he comes across the line. What is it going to be? It's 11.9, so it's not overly slow. So we've now got Petter Berlak come down the inside of Alex Seaborn to turn number one, but Alex defends that rather nicely so that is uh, not going to be overtake but yeah Petter really needs to try and get past because I think most of these guys are going to sit there fairly nicely for this uh, for this first couple of stints because Yoni's pace isn't too slow but it's not too quick either no it's just uh, just on the airing on the side of caution I'd call it right now it's no, no need to take massive risk in pushing like uh, like hell even though I, th I thought he would at this moment in the race because he wants to put distance into Berliak but apparently not Tom Savoli looks like he's had a bit of an incident down at the S's down there or at least on the banked left hander there let's see what happens to him if this is indeed a replay of him currently on board now what happens here coming down towards turns two and three and then the banked left hander now he goes very high on the on the bank in there and just kind of accelerates out and loses the rear in quite a spectacular fashion front wing off and he's going to have to be in the bit lane Sadly has really not had a good season has he apart from that pole position and a pretty decent race in Silverstone he's struggled uh, quite a bit and he did say uh, a couple of hours ago that he wasn't really feeling it for this race uh, he wasn't really that comfortable with uh, with the track and that has just uh, yeah, not helped him at all as he's going to have to take a, uh, a uh, pit repair and that will drop him down quite a bit to the back of the field yeah, that's a, a real shame for him. Hopefully he does continue on in this race, but uh, it's going to be a long slog for him from here on in. He's just going to the pit lane there, but back up towards the front of the field or even into the midfield. We're watching right now Mitchie Hoyer 
uh, trying to get past a couple of cars. It's Jim Parisis at the uh, head of this train. You've got Callas, Hoyer, Zweiz and uh, Shepard all involved. And it looks like even uh, Zweiz under a bit of pressure there from Chris Shepard. But nothing doing down to turn number one. And that corner down there, even though it is a hairpin, as you can see on the track map on the bottom left-hand side of your screen, you can see that um, the braking zone is so small because you carry so much speed around it that the braking zone really isn't that big. So moves are, uh, are less likely than they otherwise would be. But look at this, how close it is. Shepard almost pushing him up the S's and up through the hill, but there's just nowhere to go at this section of the racetrack. Yeah, certainly very, uh, very difficult part of the racetrack indeed. And it, yes, yeah, a little bit difficult to overtake there, but that part of the track is really where you need to um, set yourself up for the moves that uh, you will make a bit later on. But it seems everyone's going through pretty nicely at the moment. Petta hasn't had, Petter hasn't had uh, another look uh, at Alex Siebel just yet, so I think he's sitting behind, but he really does need to make some moves during the course of this race to get up, because if he's first and... Sorry, if Jernay's first and he's fifth, that's another 15 points, which is going to make it almost impossible for him to even think about winning the title, because Jernay will pretty much need to DNF both of the, uh, the final two races. Yeah, he would pretty much, Berliak would pretty much need to win both of the races uh, in any case. And uh, yeah, that would be uh, a tall order for him, that's for sure. So uh, yeah, we're, uh, we're going to see how that one plays out. It's all looking pretty single file at the front of the field, though. We've actually got uh, Van der Niet now into this train, and he's on the mediums. He's going to be towed along by these guys. And uh, when he does get his turn and everyone comes into the pit lane, um, we, uh, we, we're we going to see what he can do, because he's probably going to be saving on holding something back just a little bit, and then he can unleash it all when he uh, actually gets back uh, into, uh, into the fray here. So um, we'll really see what he's got to offer. But just looking at this uh, banked left-hander here, Camp, I feel like I'm watching IndyCar with how banked that is. That's absolutely ridiculous <laughs> down there at turn number four. And the best part of it is you can use so many different lines. And we're seeing lots of drivers actually using sort of quite quite a high line to try and use that extra angle to really uh, carry the speed through the corner. It's quite an interesting one. Um, but you can definitely dive up the inside. But then, as we saw with sad sadly, if you go a little bit too... or actually, sadly, DNF from the race, unfortunately... But um, if you go a little bit too tight, you actually get really wiggly on the exit as it's such a sharp uh, incline up the hill after that. So yeah, it's a very interesting corner. And uh, I actually quite like it. I think it's it's great that they've added in these banking corners. And it's great that R Factor 2 has brought it into the game so quickly as well. Yeah, I'm glad you like them because I absolutely hate them. I can't lie. But anyway, Peter Berliak on, the, on, the, uh, on board with him right now. This is the difficulty he's got. If you just look at the rear wing of Alex Siebel in front of him, despite the fact that Berliak is only two tenths behind, he can do absolutely nothing because the Evolution Motorsports car has got the DRS of Mohamed Patel just in front of him, and that's going to make things very difficult. I actually think that even though I don't actually like driving these bank corners, that they could provide an opportunity for someone to throw it down the inside because you can definitely uh, throw it in a little bit harder than you otherwise would be able to. And uh, the way you have to kind of go high for the uh, kind of the run out of the corner, it kind of leaves the door open a little bit. So I think later on in the race, we'll definitely see some moves thrown down the inside there at turn number four. It's certainly a good place for some battles because you can stay side by side through the kink before it as well. That is certainly an uh, area of opportunity. But now just looking at what is happening with the lap times. They're staying fairly consistent in sort of the, the high... Uh, 11s and to be honest they're doing some of these drivers are pretty much doing their fastest laps of the race they're just consistently doing sort of 11 8 11 9 in that sort of region just sort of doing their laps and seeing what is going to happen i think we're going to see pit stops beginning in sort of lap 10 or so maybe lap 12 that sort of region just to see what's going to happen as uh, that was uh, Mohamed patel having a bit of a look at dennis jordan there so he's starting to get a little bit racy knowing he doesn't want to get uh, let Yerne have a too comfortable lead there at the front. Yeah, I, d I don't think he does indeed. But Simicic just getting a little bit of a, uh, a shoddy run out of turn number four. Jordan just closing up to the back of him. But as we keep mentioning, down this uh, downhill swooping right-hander, you really cannot do anything. There's absolutely no 
braking zones at all in this part of the circuit but until you get to here so uh, it's it's really difficult to get through at that particular and I don't think these guys really want to pass each other right now currently on lap nine and the strategies as he said are going to come into play in a few moments time who is going to blink first and who is going to go for the undercut is Simoncic going to take the uh, the race by the scruff of the neck and pit first to really throw everyone off well personally I doubt that because you could end up in a little bit of traffic later on and your rivals could hang him out to dry completely um, but I feel like someone maybe maybe even Siebel Mojtek someone like that down in that top five region maybe even Burlak is going to uh, really throw the Hail Mary in this race and see what he can do with an early undercut here it's really a, a waiting game to see who blinks first but I think once the first one has blinked then they will all be in yeah, they're starting to slow down just a little bit. They're now into the 1 minute 12, so the tyre's starting to go off just a tiny bit. Or oh, as we see uh, Hoyer here and Santa Callas round the outside of turn Ooh. number 3. But you see that you see that banking, you see how Yenny, uh, sorry, Michi Hoyer just sent it up the banking and actually carried the speed through, which is exactly what you can do. And he used that very well to get away from Callas there for P12. But that was actually Hoyer getting past, wasn't it? Because he was in 13th. So Hoyer is now up into 12th place and actually not looking too bad. But someone just ahead of him is Jim Parisis. As what has Baxter done? Has he gone off again? He's had a couple of issues already this race. Coming out through turn number nine into 10. Oh, just goes for a bit of a spin on the entry. Potentially a downshifting too much and that is going to cause his DNF so 17 drivers left in this race as we finish the first 10 laps here Mohamed Patel is looking really close to Dennis Jordan can he get his nose down the inside as Dennis is actually looking really closely as well the three of them get very close into turn one so Patel is really starting to push and trying to force a mistake yeah, look at this. He's looking every which way at the moment. Is he going to send it down the inside? Yes, he is. At turn number four, he's using the low line, but he just understeers ever so slightly up towards the Evolution Motorsports car. Thought they were going to collide for a moment, but Mohamed Patel can't quite get through, and that is the disadvantage. Meanwhile, Zvias and Kalas now. Kalas is really dropping back right now, and uh, now Zvias has got through as well. So the singularity kind of orange and black car there for the uh, Dutch livery. He's really got through, and uh, now he's into 13th as well, chasing after Michi Hoyer as well. But real action going on down there at turn number four. It's it's really steep, uh, the banking, and uh, the dangers of it we just saw from Mohamed Patel there because um, he sent it in really low where the banking's not quite as severe, um, but he was really understeering towards uh, Dennis Jordan, and for a moment I thought they were going to collide. But she saw Dennis Jordan on the top. He just floored it and used the banking to his advantage that was quite uh, quite incredible how he defended that one has become onto the start finish straight for another lap and it's actually Peter Burlak who's looking pretty close to Siebel but that evolution has got a pretty good top speed there obviously he's got uh, DRS as well but he's also been able to defend quite well and it's one of those situations where do you use your quali boost because uh, obviously if you use it too early in the race then you uh, obviously potentially blow your engine later on so you don't want to do anything too crazy right now which is why we've seen them as you know as per usual the first 10 15 laps they're always a little bit um subdued no one doing anything too crazy because this is just where you're setting up the race this is where you're seeing what other people are doing are they saving are they going fast working out what your strategy is going to be and so far everyone is keeping it fairly clean yeah it has been very clean so far it has to be said uh, we've got uh, four retirements currently but uh, most of those to be honest were single car incidents we did see that one with Aaron Ada, um, but uh, that has been about it we're not seeing very much contact from these guys at all but um, yeah and obviously Craig Baxter also lost his front wing early on as well but um, yeah as I said very clean mostly single car incidents we're currently completing lap 12 is anyone going to go in nobody from the top five so these guys are waiting quite a long time to make their first pit stops um, and we're yet to see anyone blink here anyone uh, nobody really going for the huge undercut on the first pit stop but when you've got three pit stops it's kind of uh, makes some of them a little bit less important um, because you can kind of wait for the next one um, because you know it's not going to be that far away this makes you wonder if any if any of these guys are trying to stay out and do a two stop it is possible but it is a bit of a stretch we're already on to lap number 13 so i do wonder i was assuming that most people would be trying a three stop strategy unless 
they are potentially saving these so they can use maybe more sets of the mediums or even the softs later on in the race we will have to see and that is obviously why we, we uh, come to the race because we don't know what's going to happen we're, we're trying to guess what they're going to do what they're going to do on this strategy and importantly and it looks like Yerni is being fairly controlled at the front they're still in the low 12 so the pace drop off isn't actually too bad just yet so let's see what they do as they come around to complete lap number 13. Yeah, just looking back from Simicic and as you can see, there's nobody really hanging it to the left-hand side right now. Everybody's staying out once again through lap 13. Now on to lap 14. So maybe these guys are attempting the two-stop strategy, but I'm presuming that uh, it's going to be two sets of hards from here on in if they're going for that uh, two-stop strategy, um, because uh, otherwise we wouldn't really be discussing the three-stop at all. But... Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if anyone really goes for the alternate. If uh, everyone's doing a two-stop, then who's going to go for the three-stop? And if everyone's doing a three-stop, then who's going to attempt a two-stop? Because um, I think these these races that really are in the middle are uh, are the most exciting because um, it can really shake things up, that's for sure. The Simic, it looks like he's just trying to apply a little bit more pressure right now. I think the gaps are just uh, kind of widening a little bit between the cars. Um, and it's really Simic, as this is all coming from. I wonder if he's pitting in a few moments, if he's just burning out his tyres uh, because he knows they're coming off in a lap. Um, I'm not really sure, but uh, at least visibly, the gaps seem to be growing ever so slightly. Yeah, he's starting to go a little bit quick. He's now back into the 11s on that last lap. And yeah, just got to see what, who is going to be the first one to blink is really... Because as soon as the first of these guys pit, everyone will react either that lap or the next one. So they're really just waiting to see because obviously the longer they stay out, that helps everyone because then they have fresher tyres towards their, their next stints. So it is really just a game of a cat and mouse to see who is going to be blinking first of all. They obviously onto lap 15 of the race. And if you want to do a two stop, you will need to do somewhere in the region of high 20s, maybe 30 laps um, on a set of hards. So that is why it's starting to push it a little bit. Um, because hards really work for near sort of 20, maybe 25 laps uh, without a bit of saving. So it is sort of on the edge. And we just got to see, uh, yeah, what these drivers can do. But they've, as you said, they've just spread out just a tiny bit as Yerni is starting to stretch his legs a little bit. Only one tenth of his fastest lap of the race on the last lap. I can't help but feel, though, that Yerni Simicic is driving completely within himself at the moment, just demoralising everybody. Um, and in the final few laps, like we saw, or in the final 20, uh, 15 laps, like we saw at back at the Nürburgring, I feel like he's just going to unleash his pace on everybody and uh, nobody's really going to be able to respond. But Dennis Jordan just showing his nose, but he's not been brave enough to go for a move just yet. He's uh, playing the waiting game, which we often do see in these races. No point in going for any suicidal dive bombs at this moment. Um, they have saved for later on in the race, but um, yeah, it's... Uh, it's mostly single file at the moment. As I said, I feel like Simicic is just really holding something back right now. And uh, we're going to see what his real pace is like only in the final few laps. Yeah, there's uh, there's no point over pushing just yet. He's just setting up what he's going to do. And I think that we're going to be seeing a two-stop strategy because they've stayed out quite a long time on these soft compound tyres. We did see, I think it was Jacob Reed in the academy race do 20 laps but that was with almost half the amount of fuel so that makes it a little bit easier with a full tank of fuel that's when it gets a little bit more a little bit more difficult um but yeah Yanni's really starting to push now look at this the gaps are really opening up at the front actually let's see the uh, the lap times is this him going slow or is this anyone else um, oh Berliak. going Berliak's quick in. yeah it's actually just the it's just the other people slowing down but i should say Berlak and brackshock both of them are in so Berlak has taken the initiative goes on to set the hard compound tires as we expect and he thinks 16 laps is what he wants out of a set of those hard compound tires is he going to come out in traffic this is the important bit he's going to come out behind Eros Mashuli the interesting part is how far behind and he's actually got a bit of a gap so if he pushes really hard he might be able to make something work here as Yerni Simicic has dropped from me Oh, oh, my oh no! Oh my goodness me! Oh no! Please don't disconnect, Yerni. Please don't disconnect. He's dropped off the timing page. I really hope he comes back. He's DNF'd. Oh, oh. my god! Wow! If if Petter Bullock needed 
a race. This is the race he needs. Yone Simic has, has gone from the race. And now Dennis Jordan is leading the way from Mohamed Patel and Alex Siebel, who's caught up right behind. Petr Berlak is in fresh air. This could work out so well for him. And I can't believe Yerne. He normally has amazing uh, connection as um, Chris Shepard also DNF. So let's see who comes in. And Mojek stays out. Vax stays out. But everyone else on those soft tyres is now in the pit lane. Jordan, Siebel, Patel. And who else is that? Robin Panzar is in. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that was very in. close with uh, Mohamed Patel and uh, Robin Panzar coming in there. But this race is absolutely on right now. Where is Petr Berliak? That is the big question. There he is, just going through the bottom of the screen. And Petr Berliak, I think, is into net second place right now. Just in behind Dennis Jordan. That's a phenomenal outlap from Petr Berliak. And all his Christmases and birthdays have come at once in the very last lap. Simicic disconnects and Berliak has just put in a fantastic strategy call. This... <laughs> Sim Racing just never stops giving, does it? This is the race, like, the in capital letters race that Petter needs to win because he's 29 points behind. And now that Yerne is gone and Petter's done that amazing strategy, he's got such good opportunity to win this race as there's only Dennis Jordan ahead of him now. So this is going to... Oh, this is going to be rather um, interesting to see what Pet is going to do now. He's got this in his hands. He's done. He's played the card. He's got the strategy in his favour. Now, what can he do as he is effectively in second place? Goodness me, this race is absolutely on now, both for the race win and for the championship. It is the most, arguably, the most important race in this championship so far. We're talking about at the top of the program how Simicic could seal it today. Well, I think we may have jinxed him in talking about all the championship talk. And now he is unfortunately out of the race with a disconnection. There's Danny van der Niet just coming out of the pit lane for Netrex Grand Prix. And uh, he is absolutely fine. But this is the difficulty now for the likes of uh, Dennis Jordan and Alex Siebel, you're currently seeing, um, with uh, Janus Braxock. Jordan is in behind Mashuli and uh, Godek and Callus and all of these guys and he's going to have to pass them on circuit because they're going to be going quite a long way into this race. Yeah, that is the only um, the only real issue of um, keeping the field fairly close together like Symmetric. Well, Robin Panzar's had a big crash in turn three. Thomas Vack is also out of the race. I do wonder if they uh, were linked oh. and it looks like they might have been because that's Thomas Vack on the right hand side of the screen coming through the kink of turn two into turn three. Oh, oh no, no, big no. Contact. Both of them in the wall and both of them out of the Dutch Grand Prix. Only 13 cars. Wow. We've had a lot of DNFs so far in this opening part of the race. And just to, uh, to finish that point at the front, you are correct that these are always Dennis Jordan now getting down the inside of Aris Mashuli. These are the important overtakes now because however quick they get through this traffic is going to determine where they're going to be when we get to the mid part of the race. But this is what happens when Yerne bunches everyone up. They don't pull away. And they don't get ahead of the people on the soft, uh, the harder compound tyres. And it actually looked like Dennis Jordan decided to push quite hard as uh, he's dropped quite a bit, uh, got quite a bit ahead of Petr Berlak. I think what he does actually, uh, now thinking about it, is to protect from the undercut because these guys know that if they pit early or, or not on the lap that he is, then they're just going to get stuck in traffic. So um, if he bunches everyone up and makes sure the guys on the harder tyres are actually really close to them, um, then he can make sure that the undercut doesn't quite work. Unfortunately, if he wasn't still in the race, uh, if he was still in the race, excuse me, um, it wouldn't have really mattered because Berliak had a free track and a phenomenal outlap as well. So um, it wouldn't really have mattered. But here he is currently looking from the front of Mohamed Patel's car and he is trying to get past Mashuli. This is the seventh position on the road right now, but it's going to turn into second position when all the pit stops play out, we think, looking back from Mashuli. It's going to be down the inside from Berliak and sixth, sorry, seventh place for the Edge Esports driver. And he will be on his march and trying to catch up to Dennis Jordan once again. Dennis is now going to be stuck behind Godek and Kalas for a little bit as well. Though Godek's had, oh, Godek's had a big wobble coming out of turn four. And now Jordan's all over the back of him. And this is the exact thing that Petter needs to catch back up again as Jordan managed to get ahead and Petter lost a bit of time with the HM yellow car as this is yeah this is the part of the race that is the crucial part in the traffic as 
someone we actually didn't really mention is Janos Brackshock is effectively up into fourth position at the moment because he got Alex Siebel in the pit stop. So this is looking very good. It's setting up nicely for the second half of the race. And this is, as I said, the time where you need to make these moves stick so you don't lose that much time. Yeah, goodness me. But what a drive from uh, Brackshock currently. He's doing very well at the moment. He's going to have to fend off Alex Siebel and David Mojek through most of the race, though. If he wants to maintain that to net fourth position, currently on the back of Patel, by the way, as well, as we currently watch Dennis Jordan, he's going to have to spend another lap behind Godek, and it's going to allow Petter Berliak to catch up to the Evolution Motorsports driver. And now we are going to see the top two back together once again. How is the traffic going to be dealt with right now? Dennis Jordan takes a really wide line and a fantastic exit as they go side by side through the S's. This could get sketchy if these guys aren't careful, but Godek lets him have it and Dennis Jordan is up to fifth. And also behind Mohamed Patel was let through effectively by Aris Mashuli, who went into the pit lane. So this trio of Patel, uh, Mojek, uh, sorry, Brackshock and Siebel uh, with Mojek just behind them. So it's really four of them now have all caught up and they're going to be getting back up on the back of them as we now have Jordan trying to get past the net wrecks of Sander Callas and he can't quite get past just yet but Burlak is now on the back of Godek as well it's going to be a little bit more difficult because I think Godek is going to get DRS yes he will off the back of Dennis Jordan so it might not be the easiest move but this is really what he needs to do Petter he needs to not let Dennis run away with this you're all doing me that oh some people going for the pit lane and some people are not it looked like uh, Parisis has been in so has Callus but uh, I thought that uh, Godek was going in as well Burlak would have been very pleased with that but unfortunately for the Croatian he wasn't so uh, Burlak is going to have to spend another lap behind um, that fourth place car right now and this could really hurt his race it's a good exit as they go down the S's right now is he going to go for it there's nowhere really to go and he is going to have to stay behind for a few more corners yeah he doesn't need to risk anything you can overtake as you kick finally to the right um, before you go through I think it's turn seven the long right hander you can get through there but it's a little bit risky especially with someone that you know is going to be a bit slower and you can get past on a DRS straight as I think Godek has dropped out of DRS now yeah, just about out of DRS from Dennis Jordan. So this should be a fairly nice overtake. But Dennis is starting to push now. He knows that now Yerne has gone. He is leading the race and he needs to now try and dictate what happens. And look, he is pulling away so much from Marek Godek that Petter really needs to send this one down into turn number one. Yeah, he really does. But this is going to be much easier for him because Godek this time hasn't got the DRS. And now Berliak straight down the inside. Easy as you like. He's into fourth position now. But he's got a 1.6 second margin to catch up to Dennis Jordan, who in turn has got 4.5 seconds to catch up to Georgie Zvias and Michi Hoya. However, I don't think he's going to catch those two before they actually pit. Oh, oh Hami Patel, what a move that was, as Godek didn't really know where he was going, and he's just getting out of the way of everybody here, it looks like. Um, this could get a bit dangerous for Alex Siebel, but um, it looks like everyone's got away with it. Godek just let Patel and Brex up through, but apparently he doesn't like Alex Siebel because he's not letting him through. Oh, I don't think he really let Patel pass. Um, Godek isn't using that high line that we've seen work so well for some of these drivers. Patel just sent it around the top of the of the, uh, of the the sort of oval, really, and had all the speed on the exit to get past. And then Godek, I think, because uh, Brakshuk is basically his sister teammate, so he would have basically let him pass. But look at the speed Patel takes around the outside. Uh, Burlak as well. And look at that. Godek had nothing uh, to defend. Yeah, I think uh, Godek was just getting out of the way of his uh, sister teammate there, obviously. He, uh, he has the, the right to do that. However, uh, Siebel uh, does not <laughs> obviously have any sort of affiliation. So he's going to have to get past the old-fashioned way on track. And there he goes down the inside of turn number one. That should be fairly comfortable as Mojek is going to try and get past as well. Following him through, although he's actually going to be blocked off there a little bit by Godek. Although I've been thinking about it, but not just yet. Although he's going to try maybe that outside line, though not just yet. But yeah, Godek hasn't got the memo about that outside line in turn four there he has it oh speaking of outside lines goodness Ooh. me Mojek trying to hang it around the outside there really got caught up on the curves it has to be said and that really wasn't quite on I wouldn't say and um, this is the seventh position of course he's trying to get past Marek Godek and that really didn't come off from Mojek um, real shame for him but he's gonna have to wait a little bit longer he's gonna have Danny van der Nepp just behind him now as well so 
Um, a bit of an interesting one with these guys, but uh, goodness me, what a there's so much drama going on in this race. It's uh, going on all throughout the field, it's not just at the front, but all the way down the midfield and down towards the back as well. Yeah, Mochek was trying to get that inside into that kink that I was saying, because um, once the curb ends, there's this massive bit of tarmac that you can use, but now Mochek around the outside with, I think, Godek, yeah, coming into the pit lane, so that's made it nice and easy. So this race has been quite interesting. We've had, uh, what's that, eight DNFs so far. Cabin Machan unfortunately didn't even make the starts. So it's been such an attritional race that uh, it's actually opened up and sort of opened up the field quite a lot and it's made it rather interesting because it's really just these uh, top guys um, who are on that sort of normal strategy as such left in the race. But we do have people like Priestess and Hoyer not too far behind who might be challenging later on with their softer ties. But back at the front, Jordan is now leading by over two seconds. And remember, Jordan, I believe, has only got one podium so far this season as well. So not only has he got his first pole, but he's looking like he might be able to get his first win because he has pulled away from Petter fairly easily. Yeah, he's done very well so far in this uh, in this stint, pulling a 2.2 second margin. As you can see right now, his best result so far in this season was second place back at the Azur Grand Prix at round number five. We'll see if he can go one better with this one. And currently, it's looking very good for him, it has to be said, especially if Burlak, um, Petel, uh, Braxox, Siebel all start to battle. That's a four-car train all over second place. If those guys begin, guys begin to battle then Jordan is going to be absolutely running away with this one. So he's going to be just praying that Patel really goes for this um, and that Burlak makes a mistake somewhere. But what do you do if you're in Petter Burlak's position? With Yannis Simicic's DNF, a second place would do nicely. That is 18 points. So he would be then 11 behind. If he gets the win, he will only be four points oh. behind. So that is such a big difference. I think he really needs to push for this victory. And considering the way he's driven in the last couple of races, he's really trying to do his best. And uh, yeah, I think he needs to, tr to definitely push. Although Dennis is pulling away a little bit more. I wonder if Dennis is going to do something different on the strategy or if this is literally just the pace that he's got. Yeah, I do wonder about the uh, strategic options for these guys. Is Burlak trying to take these tyres a little bit longer than everybody else? Is Jordan attempting to burn off these tyres so that he can um, make more stops in this race? I'm really not sure um, what the strategical thinking is behind these guys, but um, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see how it play, play, uh, plays out, uh, really. And it's a super fascinating race, really. It's just um, totally unorthodox uh, to see... Yone Simicic out of the race. Disconnection, of course, if in case you're joining and wondering why he's in DNF. Uh, he unfortunately disconnected earlier on, and now he's only going to have his first retirement of the season. Interestingly, he scored points in every other race, or in every race so far this season, in all seven rounds. The only other man who can say that so far is Janus Braxok, and he is one of those benefiting from Yone Simicic's uh, demise. When was the last time Simicic actually had a DNF? He was on the podium every single race but one last year. So I think his last DNF that I can remember was in Japan 2018, which was the race he unfortunately lost the championship to Michaela D'Alessandro, where Dylan Scrivens had uh, a bit to, to play in that as well. But that was his only DNF um, of that season as well. So this it just shows you how... Um, consistent um, Simicic has been. In fact, even in 2017, he never had a, a DNF in that season as well. I'm just going back through the results to actually see. And he didn't have a DNF in 2016 either. So this is his, like, his second DNF in five years. That is quite incredible. It's the second DNF ever in the World Championship. He's been a driver since 2012. This is his ninth season in the World Championship here in 2020. And it's his second DNF in his uh, entire existence as a world championship driver that is, let, i'll just try and find how many races he's actually attended 96 races he's attended this is his 97th and it's his second retirement an astonishing record but unfortunately this is going to be one of his very few retirements and this is an important one as well because if burlak i mean even if burlak gets third place he's going to be so much closer and it's going to be so tight with only uh, with only uh, two races to go after this one, and that is—it's just crazy how uh, things can things can change. And that has really opened up this championship, and Petter's in such a good place 
Although Dennis Jordan, as we said, has pulled away a little bit, but he's starting. Uh, Petter starting to come back at him a little bit as Jordi Viz finally pits, and we have the order true at the front. So Dennis Jordan is leading by one and or well, one point six seconds at the line from Petter Berlak. Yes, it's a really, really interesting race right now. The field has now been cleansed with the Georgi Zvez into the pit lane. It's 1.9 seconds, so Burlak is just beginning to reel that gap in. And in doing so, he's towing Patel, Braxock and Siebel all the way to the back of him. So we could have a five-car train for the lead here. And we've had over 30 laps of this race. It's quite astonishing how this race has gone so far. There's been so much drama and there's equally as much drama to come in the second half of the race, I'm sure. God, I, uh, yeah, I still, I, I feel so bad for, for Yanni with only a second retirement ever. That is, that is uh, quite something. And that just shows you why he is obviously the, the reigning world champion trying to get two in a row. And we haven't had two championships in a row since uh, Bono House in 2013 and 14. So it's been quite a while. But yeah, maybe this is uh, the day that Pesbelic can get at least a step closer he won't be able to retake the championship lead but that dnf in uh portugal is now being pretty much written off and this is going to be them very close with only two races left and he's he's catching up to dennis again he's 1.3 seconds another three tenths on that final lap uh that last lap i should say i think this is really going to close up as we get towards the second pit stop yeah, it really is closing up right now. Well, let's hope that he can get to the back of him before the pit stops, because that would make things very interesting indeed. In doing so, in closing this gap, by the way, he's absolutely decimating the train behind him. Braxock is suddenly starting to lose a bit of pace and lose a bit of time to Mohamed Patel, who's kind of struggling to hang on to Burlak's DRS and Sipstream right now. Um, he's really, as I said, destroying the train in behind him. And if he can actually get up to the back of Dennis Jordan, uh, in his ZRS alone, then that will be even better for Burlak because he could be in a very difficult situation where he's having to try and overtake and try not to be overtaken at the same time, which is uh, not ideal for him. That's why he's trying to uh, drop everyone behind him for the chance to uh, have a free reign, really, at Dennis Jordan. And he's closed in again. Another couple of tenths. Pessa is coming. I do wonder if Jen Dennis went out a little bit too hard in that first 15 laps of this second stint and maybe he wore his tyres just a little bit more than Petter and that is potentially the reason for this but who knows we'll have to see how that one works out or if uh, Dennis is just pacing himself a little bit and we still don't know if they're going to do a, a two or a, a three stop strategy that is still um, completely open and that is probably going to uh, dictate as well this next pit stop is probably going to dictate what they are going to do who is going to come out on top? Because remember, Petter pit one lap earlier, so he might need to pit one lap earlier this time round as well. He may well do. Uh, we'll just have to see how well he's conserved those tyres of his, of course. Um, and uh, yeah, that will really become apparent around lap 40 and afterwards, because if these guys are coming in before lap 40, then they're definitely on a three-stop strategy. They're not going to be able to take the hards over 30 laps if they've only managed, uh, if they've not even managed to get to lap 40. So. Um, they're going to have to go at least lap 40, maybe even lap 45 if they want to go to the end of this race. That will be 27 laps in. Even that would be quite a long stretch on these tyres. I'm going to go back in a moment and try and find um, when Petr Berliak came in, um, just so that we can really do the maths on this and see if who's going halves um, to the end of the race from their last pit stop. Who's making one or two stops in this race and who's making three? Yeah, three stops is, well, I mean, we're already getting to that point. There's uh, 40 laps left. So that's, if you're making another pit stop, that's 220 laps. So already getting into the region that you might be able to do a medium and a soft. But is that going to be quicker than staying out and then going for an extra set of the hards? So that is really what you what you need to weigh up. And obviously that is what the, the teams have been testing. There's been a three week gap between this and the last race. So plenty of time for them to do, uh, to do testing and find out what is the best strategy. It's not the longest pit lane in the world here, so it's certainly viable to do three, but most races this season have been a two-stop strategy. So again, we'll just have to find out what they're going to do. And I I think uh, Petter's actually just dropped off a little bit on this, and it would be good to see maybe what the championship standings look like with, uh, with the way that the race is at the moment, because... 
We also got to see what, uh, for instance, like Michi Hoya, he's batting for third in the championship and he's losing out at the moment. So Dennis Jordan would jump up into third place. So he would be beating Michi Hoya and David Mochek. And look at Alex Siebel as well. All that uh, big battle there for fourth place. So this is quite interesting. But Petter would still be 11 points. So he would still need to win both races to have it um, in his own hands. However, that is a lot better than 29 points that he is behind Yerne at the moment. So yeah, getting very close there in the top half of the Formula Sim Racing World Championship brought to you by IMB Racewear Simmer and 3D Wrap as well. So these guys fighting for all the prizes and money that come with it. Yeah, they definitely are. They're fighting very hard right now as well. It looks like Dennis Jordan is just beginning to push that gap out ever so slightly. Once again, the gap creep, creeping even maybe towards two seconds right now. Burlak, uh, Patel, Braxop, Siebel, they're all here. They're all in one long train as well. Currently just DRSing really off the uh, edgy sports driver who's heading them right now. Really wondering what Patel's going to do in this race because as I said at the start, he's got no championship to worry about. The other four in this group kind of have, they've got their championship positions to worry about. Obviously only Burlak is in contention for the world championship, but the other three really are in contention for positions and it's getting incredibly close between them as well. Speaking of close, this is Vyas and Michi Hoyer who are fighting pretty hard over ninth position and uh, it's going to be a pretty good day for Michi Hoyer all in all. He's had a very stressful start to it and um, he's only just managed to get in but it looks like he's actually might be able to manage points in this race. And Jordi was actually actually got past there. Yeah, Jordi was behind. So this is Jordi getting up into ninth place and he's only got points in I believe San Marino in Imola, second race of the season so far this year, and also Azure. So I think he's only scored points in two races so far, and this will be him in ninth position. So that would be a pretty good result, because Singularity are um, second last in the standings at the moment, behind HM Yellow and a ground effect, but not too far behind. So this will be an extra few points to their tally. And yeah, he only got ninth in San Marino and fifth in Azure. So this would be a great race if he can stay in the points there in ninth. Yeah, it would indeed be. It's not been the, the greatest season he's ever had. But um, yeah, it would not be a bad result for him there in the top 10 of the positions. Now, currently looking at Dennis Jordan coming through the S section and down towards the incredibly fast, long right-hander at the top of the circuit, turn number eight. Um, surprised it's not more than one corner to be honest, but I guess there's only one AP. Oh, big crash into the wall there for Marek Godek on the pit straight. I wonder if that was a bit of an intentional one, um, to be honest, because uh, you don't often see crashes there. He is on his own currently, or is he defending from someone? Oh, oh we got oh. hit. He got oh. hit there. I'm pretty sure Sander Kalas hit him there, coming out uh, onto the start finish straight. I'm Sure, there was some contact here. Yeah, he, he nudged the rear. Santa Callas there just gave him a little bit of a flick. And that has sent um, Godek to retirement. <laughs> so there's only 12 people left in this race. What an attritional race we've had. Yeah, indeed. That was uh, that was the smallest tap, but it's uh, basically caused Godek's car to totally disintegrate in front of his eyes there. Um, so that's very unfortunate for him, crushing on the pit wall, which is... Um, unfortunately not been very nice to his car and it's, uh, his bits are strewn across all of the circuit right now. Um, fortunately we don't have to uh, wait for ages for Marshall to clear it up because it's not a thing but um, we can continue on of course. Currently approaching, uh, we've just gone past halfway in this race, 36 laps out of 72 um, and we're getting to the real crunch point really. Are these guys going to go for two stops or three? The, the fork in the road is fast approaching them. If they're going to go for the three stop then we're going to see them coming very soon. If they're going for the two stop, then we're going to see them stay out for a little bit longer. I feel like with the way these guys have been driving, it's probably going to be the two stop at this point. Yeah, if they stay out for a couple more laps, they will be able to do... Well, I mean, to be honest, even now, they might be able to do a medium medium. Or if they stay out a few more laps, they might be able to do a medium soft, which is going to be very quick towards the end of the race. It just depends if they think it can make up a whole pit stop rather than staying out maybe another six or seven laps and then going to another set of the hards. So that is really what they need to weigh up and as you say this is the point in the race because they're halfway through they've already done one pit stop so they could do basically the opposite again and go hard soft or maybe medium soft to the end so they need to just yeah decide what they're going to do in the next couple of laps but it looks like 
um, they might be staying out. And I wonder who... I wonder who's prepared. <laughs> I wonder if anyone has prepared for um, both eventualities and it has the ability to react if it's not quite what they thought it was going to be. I wouldn't be surprised if these guys, particularly up towards the fore, have uh, practiced both strategies and found out which one's quickest or which one they think is quickest. Um, of course, the strategies could work um, for somebody and it could work. The exact same one could not work for somebody else because uh, of the way people manage ties and the way they manage pace and so on. So uh, it, it will be interesting to see who takes on which strategy, but it looks like Dennis Jordan has finally been caught. It's been a long chase from Petter Berliak, but he's finally in the DRS. He's finally going to be getting some relief on the straights, and he's finally not towing this whole group behind him. Now, it looks like it's a DRS train for the lead. The top five, Jordan Berliak, um, Patel, Braxock and Siebel all in one long line, and this race is really on once again. Yes, it is certainly on. I do wonder if Dennis Rodden is starting to struggle a bit on the tyres. Let's have a look just to confirm. Yeah, he pit on lap 17. So they've done 21 laps on these tyres. So they they still got a bit of life left in them because um, they could probably go to the mid-high 20s um, if they really wanted to with these tyres. So I wouldn't be surprised if he's going to stay out a bit longer. But maybe Ber Berlak is just starting to come back at him. Although Berlak did pit one lap earlier. However, he hasn't been at the front pushing like uh, like Dennis has. No, he hasn't quite. Um, it, Dennis has, uh, of course, been on his own for most of this stint, don't forget. So, and that's going to change things up a little bit. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that affects these two strategies and um, all, all the varying different strategies that we're going to see down the field. It's going to be interesting to see where they come out as well when they make this pit stop. Are they going to be behind the guys like Parisis, Zvias and Hoyer? Because they might have to pass them uh, these guys at the front might have to pass some back markers um, in the early part of their stint. So that's going to be an interesting one as well. If they have to make their way through traffic, are undercuts going to be a little bit scuppered by that? Or are we now going to be free of the traffic because we're so deep into this race? I honestly don't know the answer. And Danny Van Der Neet has come into the pit lane. And now Netrex are technically sister teams with Edge. So does that give an option because I don't think he's going to do 33 laps to the end I think um, Danny might be taking another set of maybe softs at the end on a three stop with the way that that has worked out so what is Petter going to do he needs to do something to get ahead of Dennis he can't just sit behind him for the next 30 odd laps he's got to do something he really needs to win this race as we see an overtake here between uh, Michi Hoyer getting back past Jordi there for 8th position. So Michi having a decent race there in 8th and it's actually a Jim Parisis ahead of them in 7th. He's only 10 seconds off the lead on an alternate strategy so I wouldn't call, uh, count out Jim Parisis from getting up the field either. But let's have a look back at what these leaders are doing and Petter's still staying out for now. And the interesting thing about Jim Parisis is that he's going to help Berliak wherever he can in this race. Um, so uh, he's staying out very long, it's Parisis. Um, and, well, some undercutters might come out behind him, or, or at least Dennis Jordan, when he does indeed pit, uh, might come out behind Parisis. So uh, what if uh, Jim does a little bit of a slowing up job there um, in terms of uh, trying to back up Jordan into Berliak? That would be an interesting one. Um, because that's pretty much the only ally that Berlak has. We were talking about uh, in the Nürburgring race that, that Simicic has so many people that ha can help him. He's effectively got three penciled-in teammates all at Burst Esport because they've got two teams. Um, so he's effectively got three teammates um, to help him, whereas Berlak has one, and sometimes Parisis isn't quite there. We know how strong he is in the race, but Parisis just doesn't qualify quite well enough for him to be of any assistance, really, to his edge esports teammates so now Parisis may be able to play his way into this race if he can hold up Jordan once that Evolution Motorsports car comes in but uh, they're not coming in yet. Yeah that's one thing where I struggled with a little bit all season is teammates as I said they are technically sisters with um, Netrex but Netrex haven't really been there this year. Callas and Van Der have struggled a little bit compared to potentially um, what, you would, what you would expect however Burlak has been doing a fine job and he, I mean he is staying with Jordan now so he's definitely caught up in the DRS and he's to honest he's kind of pulling away from Patel uh, a bit as Sander Callas DNF so we've only got 11 drivers left in this race so yeah it's, uh, it's starting to get quite um, 
quite interesting that points go down to 10th and there's only 11 drivers left. I'm actually pretty shocked at the amount of people who have DNF'd, but I guess that is just the uh, the nature of the track. Yeah, we said at the start that uh, um, mistakes are going to be punished and they have been so far throughout this race. Even on the pit straight we saw with Marek Godek, um, obviously it wasn't a mistake on his part, but he did put him in the wall uh, down there into uh, turn number one, so uh, that was unfortunate for him. Just completing lap number 42, 30 laps to go, and it's going to be 30 intriguing laps. I'm definitely sure of that, and possibly 30 championship defining uh, laps here. Can that Petr Berlak win this race and close the championship margin all the way down to just four points? And that is a big question throughout this race, and uh, we'll get answers very shortly. But uh, what an enthralling race it has been, despite the fact that we've only got 11 cars left. Um, and most of the cars left in this race are going to score points, it seems. It's still edge of your seat, still from right to the end. It certainly is. And yeah, it's pretty, I mean, pretty much the top few drivers were the top few drivers at the start of the race as well, minus um, Yanni Simicic, as we previously mentioned. So, yeah, the main focus of the, uh, the top points is still fairly similar. And, we, yeah, we need to see how what's Burlak going to do. Now he's in DRS, is he going to keep on pushing? Or is this literally his pace? Can he not get <coughs> excuse me can he not get that close to um jordan uh, dennis jordan that is really what we're about to find out 30 laps left i'd say they're definitely going to stay out for a two stop now because they only need to have a few more laps and then they can go to the end of the race dennis hinting there at going into the pit lane trying to make them do something so yeah, i would say they're definitely stay out for a two stop now which is surprising i really expected someone to really push it and go for a three stop and take the advantage but it seems that following the uh, the general strategy seems to be the the safest option. So Petter needs to do something. He's to be honest, he's actually close enough to get a bit of an undercut. But if they take the hards again, it's not going to be that much of an undercut. So he really needs to work out what he's going to do here. You say it's not that much of an undercut, but it really did work for him in the first round of stops. He came in a lap early, as we noted just a few moments ago. Uh, he was about fifth position. He was behind Alex Siebel. Don't forget. If, uh, if he hadn't done that, he would probably still be at the back of this train right now, um, which would be an absolute disaster for him, and we wouldn't be uh, talking about him in the same way that we are right now. Of course, he would have been promoted a position because of Simoncic's um, disconnection, but um, yeah, he would still be a long way back. But uh, he's now in second place. He gained three positions purely by doing a one-lap undercut. Now, can he gain a position from undercutting Dennis Jordan? He's already started the mind games, and here comes Dennis Jordan. He's covering from the undercut and he is taking the ball by the horns here. He's into the pit lane already, as is Janus Braxop. And Janus came in so quick there. He might, he might have sped. Uh, we'll have to see when he comes out of the pit lane, if a little penalty um, indicator comes up. But I do think that Janus might have sped there, which is such a shame if he did, because he is really going to, um, he's really going to suffer from that and unfortunately uh, i think i couldn't quite see if he got one but yeah that is not good um if he did because that was all locked oh. up as he now gets overtaken by uh michi hoyer around the outside as well as um yori Zviers. yeah Zviers has got back past hoyer these two having an absolute ding dong battle for seventh position at the moment and unfortunately Jonas braxop has really got caught up in this he is going to be well down i'm afraid at this point in the race and he's going to get stuck behind those two as well he didn't speed into the pit lane on that particular occasion, but uh, he's still a long way down. Now, what does this man do? Petr Berniak comes around the penultimate corner, through the final corner now. Surely he's got to react here. He's got to come in the pit lane, and he does. Uh, oh, Patel continues, though, so I wonder if Patel might stay out a little bit longer. Maybe take the mediums as Siebel comes in as well. But this is very, very important for Petr Berlak. What... Is it going, or you know, what's going to happen? What's it going to be when they come out of the pit lane? Dennis will have got a bit of an undercut, which is a, maybe a missed opportunity from Petter as the lap before Dennis did hint at going in the pit lane. So Petter now basically has to catch and overtake Dennis uh, on track, same tyres pretty much. And what has come behind Janus Bragshock has got um, Alex Siebel again. Oh, it's actually the person who's missing there is um, Mohamed Patel, isn't it? That is why Janos is basically in uh, provisional third place at the moment. Yeah, he's got Alex Sewell just in behind him, but he did get past Michi Hoyer into turn or somewhere around the circuit 
on that particular occasion because Hoy is down to 8th position. Zvias is now in for 5th position, which is a great drive from him, but uh, you can't guarantee that he's going to stay there because uh, he's going to have to make another stop in this race. Um, but those guys in behind aren't. Here's Mohamed Patel. Is he going to come in the pit lane now? Surely he has to. He's gone for the overcut on this occasion. He is going into the pit lane now, and he's going to be dropped in right with the train. Zvias, Braxox, Sebo, and Hoyer, I think. Um, because you can't imagine that that overcut is going to have gained in pace. He's only going to be um, losing tyre grip and pace uh, the longer he stays out. And uh, yellow flag now, briefly, but uh, it looks like everybody's fine. So Dennis Jordan's going to take the net race lead. He's actually going to take the full race lead because David Moshek is in as well. Where is Mohamed Patel? There he is on the inside of the corner. He is quite close to them and he is in net third position, but he hasn't gained anything. Yeah, he was just doing that, I think, just to get that slight advantage on the tyres. He's had enough gap to Brackshot, who's sitting in a, such a nice place there in fourth position as Nazviz loses out to Alex Siebel up the hill there. Around the outside, Alex Siebel goes. So Siebel is looking good in fifth, as well as Brackshot in fourth, and they are right behind this fight for the podium. So if anything happens, they'll be picking up the scraps and getting, as I said, on that podium. Well, what can Merlek do? He's over a second behind Jordan, but he needs to catch and overtake. And he couldn't do that in the middle stint, which was uh, potentially a little bit surprising. But that's just showing the pace that J Dennis had here. Remember, Dennis got pole position as well. So he certainly is quick here this weekend. Yeah, he's definitely not slow, is he? Around there at the Zandvoort circuit for the first ever FSR Dutch Grand Prix. The cap one second for the lead of the race right now. They've got no traffic in front of them. The nearest car to them is currently in the last sector with them. Every single car on this racetrack is in the final sector at the same time. So no traffic to deal with for any of these guys. Only 11 cars on the circuit anyway. So it's not going to be that much of an issue. It is a straight fight between Dennis Jordan and Petter Berliak. And in a weird way, this could be a fight for the championship. If Berlak gets through, he'll be four points behind Yone Simicic, who just connected earlier on in the race. And that is an extremely... Uh, interesting and fascinating um, prospect going into the final moments of this season. The final two rounds, of course, at Matsusaka and Interlagos. That is going to be absolutely tantalising. Um, and I honestly cannot wait for those two races now. Yeah, it's certainly spiced up. Even with second place for Petr Belak, 11 points is doable. So this has been such an important race in the championship. And he's still not out of a chance of winning this race either. He is staying within the DRS of Dennis. But Dennis, I think, just has enough pace to defend, like, right this second. But remember, he pit a lap earlier. So now Petter has the advantage on the slightly fresh tyres as well. Now, as we come towards the final 24 laps of this race, we need to see what they are going to do, how hard they are willing to push and how much risk they are willing to take. Yeah, it's risk versus reward here, really, for Petr Berliak. Is, is, does he want to f make a suicidal dive bomb down the inside just for an extra three points in this race? Sorry, not three points. It's going to be seven points because it's the gap between first and second. So it is a big margin between first and second in terms of the points. And that is what it's designed to do. It's designed so that these guys do go for the last lap lunges because if the gap was just one point between the first two in, the, in terms of the point scaling then Petr Berliak definitely wouldn't take it. He just would not go for it, um, no matter what the situation was. So um, that is why it's weighted like that. But it does mean that Petr Berliak has got a really tantalising prospect in front of him. Is he going to go for this move? And how hard is Dennis Jordan going to fight him for this? Because Dennis Jordan has never won a race in the FSR World Championship, of course. So it's best finish his second back earlier on in this season. So... He's going to really want this race win, but so is Petr Berdiak. So who's going to blink first and who's going to take the most risk for this? I would have to say that Jordan is probably going to be willing to take the most risk. Yeah, I speak to, uh, to Dennis uh, a fair bit in between races. He's such a, <laughs> such a nice, easy guy to, uh, to speak to. And he is saying that he and Alex might not have the, uh, the Drivers' Championship, but they really want to get amongst it in the constructors championship currently they are in third position only 20 points off the lead though despite being in third place so if they get considering as well that um Jernay Simicic is uh yeah not getting any points and Panzar as well it dnf'd they're not going to be getting any points so this is going to be really crucial and Hoyer and Mocek are not having the best day either this is going to be really good for the constructors championship so it's not just 
for the team or sorry the, for the drivers it's also for the constructors and that is something that evolution have got as their top priority yeah this has been such a fantastic race and it's turned everything on its head um, if you'd have been watching the first seven or first six uh, races of this it has been yeah it's been seven yeah, if you've been watching the first seven races of this season uh, then you can forget about it all really because it's just been turned completely on its head it's Simicic versus Burlak and Burlak is now really looking close to Dennis Jordan he fainted to the inside there he just showed the nose he's just getting in the head of Dennis Jordan up in front of him and that is really going to start to play in his mind if Jordan starts to drive in his mirrors a bit then the pace is going to go down the guys in behind are going to start to get towards the four as well and it's going to create a five car train and it may provide the conditions that Burlak wants to get through and take this race win we'll have to see though um, because it's going to be a very very close one right to the end in these final 20 laps yeah he's starting to push that isn't he he's trying to see what has Dennis Jordan got although Dennis has actually pulled away a little bit again on this race and Petter used a bit of his quality boost on that last attempt you could see because of the increased um the increased overspeed that you get from that but he doesn't need to it doesn't need to do that too often he was just judging that i think to see how close he needs to be to use the quality boost but dennis is starting to push a bit and 20 uh one laps to go in this race can dennis handle the pressure i know he can um because he's obviously uh, a champion in other series is in r factor 2 as well so he knows what it's like to win races and win championships however this is his first season in formula sim racing and his is his team evolution motorsports first season in formula sim racing so they really are sort of learning the ways of the league and this will be an incredible achievement and we've got to see if he can withstand the pressure that burdock's starting to put on him yeah, we'll have to wait and see, really. I feel like Dennis Jordan's sometimes having an off-lap and then a, a bit of an on-lap again because he's approaching that gap to, uh, or just stretching it out to about a second um, on laps like like the last one. But then you saw the lap previous to that, Berlak was under five tenths behind him and even showing the nose down into turn number one. If he was really brave, he could have gone for it on the brakes if he wanted to. Obviously, he didn't want to um, because it would have been a little bit stupid, but... Um, you know, sometimes I feel like Dennis Jordan is just being a little bit on the inconsistent side. Um, it, the, the laps aren't fluctuating by much, but Burlak is being so consistent that the gap is quite ebbing and flowing quite a lot. Um, so I feel like Dennis Jordan just needs to calm it down just a little bit, get the consistency up. Um, and in that case, he will be absolutely fine because he can. He does have the pace. He's shown it in qualifying and he's showing it here again. Um, he's got the pace to win it, but has he got the consistency? Has he got the composure? Can he soak up this pressure? Um, we'll have to wait and see, really, because uh, it's it, it's a really it's really in the balance right now in this race, is and um, it's honestly uh, th there's no way to call it really. It could go either way. It's 50-50, um, and it's just going to be it's just one of those where you have to keep watching to the very final lap, um, and even then until the very final corner, you never really know who's going to win. Yeah, the final corner. I mean. You could probably overtake to the start finish line actually if you are that close but it's that all important give or take half a second that you need to really think about making an overtake and Petter is almost there on this lap but i do think if he overtakes i think dennis is just going to get past him straight away because i think what you said about the inconsistency i do think that's maybe dennis just trying to manage the gap and not over push in the first part of this stint but Petter's yeah not going to be close enough just yet having a little flick there just to be like oh hello i'm still here but he needs to yeah work his way up to try and make something happen as yet now yordi Viz come in for a set of the soft tires in ninth place and he's gonna have a fight with mashuli and hoya towards the end of the race for that final point as well so all to play for up and down the grid, although actually Eros has come into the pit lane, so it's going to be a straight fight with Michi Hoyer, and he has a tyre advantage for that ninth position, so still a couple of points up for grabs there. Yeah, and another battle to keep an eye on throughout the final parts of this race, as is the, the one between Jim Parisis and David Mershek. I'm not sure if Jim Parisis is going to pit again here, um, because he's on the mediums, and he put those on a few laps ago now, so I would be expecting him maybe to make another pit stop, because it would be quite ambitious to go as far as he's attempting to go on those medium combine tyres but one man who's had a fantastic race I think today is Danny van der, van der Nett uh, qualifying down towards the lower parts of the top 10 running towards that 
region as well um, throughout the first part of the race. And he's now up in a solid sixth position, which is a fantastic drive from him. Yeah, his best result, I believe, is fifth, which he got in Portugal um, this season. And I mean, that's his best result ever in the World Championship. I think his fifth place, so sixth would be certainly be a good one. He hasn't quite the pace of the leaders. He's dropped off uh, five, six seconds from the back of Alex Siebel, but he's certainly doing a good job because he's pulled away from the likes of David Mocek, who have had um, podiums this year. So, and, and obviously uh, Michi Hoyer a bit further back as well. So he's doing a very good job there, as you say, for their ex Grand Prix, who haven't had the absolute best season in general, um, up and down the uh, three tiers of FSR. But the odd uh, result here and there, they are getting. Yeah, they are definitely. And uh, that is good for those guys. And it looks like it's going to be another good result. But back up the front, Petr Berliat seems to uh, want a better result right now. Second place would not be bad. It would close the championship margin to just 11 points. But he will want that gap closed even further down to four points to Yone Simicic, who is not going to score any points in this race. Jordan just taking a little bit of a tight line off of the bank final corner so that he can break up some of the slipstream down to turn number one. But uh, Burlak is yet to be close enough into turn number one or into any corner to attempt this manoeuvre. He's probably just waiting for the perfect moment. It is, uh, it is quite... Um interesting actually looking at their lap times they're doing um sort of high nines maybe low tens and uh, i was looking at uh, some some practice times and if you pit sort of now for a set of the soft tires you can get well into the the, the mid low eights so they would be well over a second a lap quicker um had uh, they gone obviously for a three stop but they these guys have decided they want the track position and they want to do it as I said before, the, the, the old-fashioned way on track, which is uh, quite an interesting thing that they decided that this is what they want to do, pushing these hard tyres uh, not quite to the limit, but certainly a bit further than you might want. And we need to see how this pace develops as they go on, because it's still not the absolute quickest pace they can do, but Petr Berlak is looking very close here. Not quite close enough to really make a move. He'd have to absolutely send it into turn one, but this is the types of laps that he just needs to close up and then try and stay this close for the next time around when they get DRS again. Yeah, if he gets to win in three or four attempts coming off of the final corner, then he really does have a shot. But I feel like the dirt, yeah, it's really hurting him around here, as we, as we might be expecting. The kind of uh, the wake off the car in front really disrupting um, the airflow over yours, and it's obviously going to be quite horrendous for Alex Siebel, who's right at the back of this train. So uh, the gaps do tend to uh, go outwards towards this portion of the racetrack and then Jordan just seems to apply some more pace here. You mentioned about managing the gap earlier. Well, maybe that is the case because he really is extending this right now. Um, it's quite phenomenal how he's just able to let the gap and hold his nerve uh, when the gap's around three or four tenths and then he's able to extend it back to a second. If only he could do that pace all of the time, then he'd be absolutely running away with this. But unfortunately, he's having to manage it. Yeah, I think he's just trying to, as you say, manage it. Just trying to push it on the laps that he needed. Like the lap, this lap just done was a lap that he needed to push because Petr was getting a little bit too close and he's done that. And he's now pulled away just enough. So I think he, uh, yeah, he's controlling this in, in, a, in a, you know, in a calm, in a, in a good way. But Berlek is just there. And if Dennis makes any sort of mistake, you know, a lock up into turn one, a slide out of any of these corners, He's going to be right on him and be there to pounce. Yeah, he's going to be waiting for that mistake if indeed it does come. But for these top five, uh, well, for most of these guys, to be honest, apart from those who have retired from the race, of those who are remaining, um, we've not seen any mistakes really from any of these guys. We've not seen anybody go off the road because generally when you do go off the road, you tend to be out the race. And that's why you're seeing currently nine retirements in this race, I believe. Uh, no, that's actually ten. And uh, we've won DNS as well. So... A really, really attritional race. Only 11 left, unfortunately, but it's provided so much entertainment. It just, it just shows that you don't need 40-odd cars for a good race. You only need two, really, if they're closely matched and uh, provide a good show. It doesn't really matter in the end, and these two up front really are providing a good show at the moment. Burlak is the, one of the closest opportunities he's ever had, but I still think he's a little bit too far back. Yeah, he can't quite stay close enough in... Uh, sort of the sector two region of the track which is why he's um sort of having to catch it back up with the drs as danny van der Neek comes into the pit lane 
So as I mentioned earlier, he's doing a three stop. So we need to see what he can do, how much time he can get back. But that is certainly um, an interesting one when everyone around him is two stopping. But he did commit to that quite a while ago with his earlier pit stop. So he's going to have to catch and overtake Michi Hoyer and Jordi Zvez, who managed to get past Hoyer. So Jordi's now up into eighth place, and that is a, a fairly good result. With Jim Priest is up into sixth on the alternate strategy, but we're still not sure if he has to make another pit stop. Yeah, I think he probably does in the case of Parisis. It's going to leave David Milzhek all on his own there with 10 seconds um, to the gaps either side of him. So that's going to be quite a lonely drive when that does indeed take place. But Zvias and Hoyer, we believe that they're going to the end of the race on those set of tyres. And obviously Danny van der is now going to be going to the end on those as well. Um, we just have to wait and see if he can catch either of those. The gap six seconds at the moment. His tyres are the freshest of anyone in the field, of his course, because he's only just made his pit stop. So that gap is going to come down initially. But when are those soft tyres going to go off? Um, and can he get there? That's the main question, um, because that will be good to see a battle in the lower part of the top ten. But currently on lap 60 now, 12 laps to go and we get to the line. And it's, uh, it's approaching the time where Burlak really needs to start making his move. He's shaping it up. He has been for the last 10, 15 laps, but uh, he's not really made any significant inroads just yet. Yeah, he's getting closer, though, in this middle sector. This is where he's been losing out on the previous few laps. Can he get close enough to Dennis to try and make something work? He is staying there fairly nicely for now. Get the DRS down this mini sort of back straight before working his way into... The all-important chicane. Can he stay close enough? Because the DRS detection is on this straight just about now. And he's got yellow lights on his dash. So he obviously has DRS and he is close. Is he close enough? I think he's using this as a quality boost. He knows that this might be an opportunity down into turn number one. What can he do? Now I think Dennis Jordan is defending a bit as well. But uh, Petter's going to dive down the inside. It's going to be a tiny bit of contact there. But Petter's got it on the inside. He's got his nose on the inside. Can he get along the inside again? Into turn number three. No, he can't, but he's certainly making Dennis Jordan think about it. That's now working their way up, up the hill. I really thought that was going to be the uh, the opportunity for Pe Petter, but he wasn't quite close enough. He sort of half thought about it into turn number one. He did absolutely commit because he was quite a bit behind, but he did just enough to unsettle Dennis, and he's even closer on this lap. It just depends how much quality boost is he using. And how much is he willing to risk? Because blowing his engine up would not be the, uh, the smartest thing to do in this situation, as Jim Priestis has taken a third pit stop. He has indeed. He's got on those soft compound tyres. He's going to be trying to catch up some guys towards the uh, the lower end of the top ten. But yeah, it was a real half-hearted move there from uh, Petter Burlak. It, uh, he really doesn't need to do that because uh, he was so concerned about making contact that he actually made making contact a bit more likely because he was so concerned about it. Um, so he really needs to be more definitive and more committed, as he said, in making these moves. He may not get a chance like that again. Let's uh, let's hope for his case that he is going to get a chance down the inside once again. But he really did come from a long way back, and that is easily the closest he's ever been to Dennis Jordan. So is he going to get another opportunity like that? He's got 10 more opportunities, you have to argue, with 10 laps to go at the line. If you only count turn one as an opportunity, um, then... He's really only got 10 left, which is not very many in the context of this circuit because it is quite hard to overtake. Yeah, he's staying close once again during this middle sector. I think this is time he's really starting his push now. Dennis has been withstanding so much pressure. <laughs> it's quite incredible uh, to see. But actually, yeah, Petter lost a little bit there coming through uh, turn uh, 10 I believe it is and now into this chicane again can he stay close enough he's possibly a car length or so further back than he has been so maybe this lap as well isn't going to quite be the one but it's sort of that uh, concertina effect that you sort of slow obviously you can't do the exact same speed every single lap so it sort of comes and goes with the pace is he going to be close enough at no, nine? not quite on this lap but he is thinking about it and he's trying to set Dennis up, but Dennis is not making any mistakes so far. No, he's soaking up this pressure really well indeed. His heart rate is going to be absolutely through the roof right now because it's going to be a very nervy final 10 laps for Dennis Jordan, no matter how this plays out. And uh, don't forget that Petr Berlak won't want to make this move too early because he could open himself up to an attack from Dennis Jordan if, uh, if he does make this move too early. If he makes it in the final few laps, then 
got to say that the Evolution car uh, won't have that many chances to get back at him, but if he makes it uh, too early, then Berlak is going to be under severe pressure himself. So Dennis Jordan currently soaking it up very well, but how long can he sustain this? Because he's basically been driving with someone uh, very close at hand for the last 62 laps. He's about to complete Ooh. his 63rd, and now he's just made a little bit of a mistake. Is this the opportunity that Burlak wanted? Yeah, Des made a bit of a mistake, but I think he actually recovered that pretty well. In the final corner, Petter is coming. He is coming. Is he going to be close enough? It seems that you only really gain right at the end of that straight, and yet on this occasion, he is uh, yeah, not going to be making a move just yet. But that was the first sign that Dennis may have one or two mistakes in him, which could be all important. And as we mentioned before, you can definitely overtake. It's just that final sector, that final uh, chicane off to the back straight is what's really the, the important corner if you're going to make an overtake into turn one or not. Yeah, it's, it's the crucial one, really. Even with the mistake there from Dennis Jordan, he was still able to easily... Uh, punch out a gap that uh, did not allow Burlak even a sniff of an opportunity. Now, just running through the top five, still all together, by the way. I know we're focusing on the top two almost religiously throughout this uh, throughout this final few laps, but it is so important in terms of the championship. We've still got Pratel, Braxock and Siebel all involved. And you see Dennis Jordan just a little bit more of a mistake. Bra uh, Burliak even closer on this occasion, coming through the final couple of corners, but Burlak goes a little bit wide himself now. He doesn't get the run that he needs or wants. And now I don't think he's going to have an opportunity. Although he is close, he might go for it, but I don't think so. Yeah, it's difficult. Dennis is doing just enough. He is doing just enough to defend. And he is yeah, making it work at the moment. As you say, the guys behind Patel, Brackshock, Siebel, all doing a good job. All within two and a half seconds off the lead after 64 laps of racing, which is right rather remarkable um, but it just seems that they can't really make any overtakes as they're stuck in a little bit of a, a DRS chain because they're all a little bit too close to each other now that they bunched up behind Dennis Jordan we can't forget David Mocek in sixth behind he has dropped off a little bit but still not too bad in sixth and Jordi Veers is now under pressure from uh, Michi Hoyer for seventh and eighth place as well so still all to play for in these uh, pretty much every position here yeah, it's, it's not been a, a bad recovery here from Burst Simplexity Esport in terms of the team championship. Of course, we know that Jordan and Siebel are going for this for Evolution Motorsports. They're trying to get this team's championship sorted, but here we go. Through the final corner now, Dennis Jordan looks like he's under severe pressure from Petter Burlap now. He's going to go to the outside. What's going to happen? He's left the door open down the inside for Burlap, but he just about shuts it enough. I think Burlak would have been better off going to the outside on that occasion, to be honest. Ah, oh, that was so... He, he thought, he really thought about it. But he, he, what he saw there was the wall, and he saw the uh, the championship actually go away from him, because DNF now, making, I mean, we said this earlier, making a too risky move is also a bad thing, because coming second is good enough. It's not the best, but it's good enough um, to give himself an opportunity. And that was just another occasion, just learning what Dennis is going to do. And Dennis, to be fair, gave him just about enough room against the wall. But it is certainly a scary thought when you have such a, a big, you know, such a big thing on the line. Yeah, it's uh, it, it, there is a lot on the line, right? It, I don't think that uh, Burlak has had a bigger race for a very, very long time. Of course, he is a champion before, but that was five years ago now. Yeah, that's a, a very distant memory in the short life of uh, sim racing, although this uh, FSR has been going on for quite a long time. Five years ago is still quite a long time in terms of uh, in terms of sim racing, and yeah, it's another follow the leader down into turn number one. Bit of a slide for Burlak there, and someone we have to mention here is Patel. How aggressive is he going to get in these final few laps? Is he just going to uh, lay back and say, I'm not getting involved in this championship at all? I'm just going to let Burlak try and overtake Jordan, and if there's an incident, I'll pick up the pieces. Or is he going to proactively go for another position here? I mean, Patel hasn't really been close enough all afternoon to get past Burlak. So I would say he's probably not going to go too crazy unless there is uh, an incident or something with the front two drivers, because 
as you say, <laughs> getting involved in a championship fight is not always uh, what you want to do. But as as I, as I just said, he hasn't really been close enough to uh, to dictate that either. It's really been Burlak who's taken the initiative this race and got himself in the position that he's in. And once again, he's going to be close enough. I think actually Dennis is a little bit too far away this time. So Petter needs to, <laughs> you know, he just needs to nail one. Uh, sector three, he just, he just needs to get absolutely perfect and hope that Dennis makes a bit of a mistake as we are now coming towards five laps to go and really getting towards the crunch time of this race. That was an absolutely insane penultimate corner from Dennis Jordan there, by the way, and that is what allowed him to slingshot down the front straight and to out of Burlak's reach, really. Uh, absolutely no chance for the Edge Esports driver for him to get through there. But uh, four laps to go. We are getting towards the end of this race now. Burlak is running out of opportunities. And it is going to have to be a big dive at some point. Is he going to settle for being 11 points behind Simintic? Or is he going to want to be only four points behind? It's a really, really difficult equation to solve. And I don't think Burlak has the answer just yet. I think he's deciding what to do. He'll probably have at least one more go at this. And if, if they have a particularly sketchy moment and it doesn't come off, I think he'll settle for second at that point, but for now, he's still going for this. Oh, I just went on board on my screen with Dennis in our final corner, and he did nail it, to be honest, but Petter's coming. This is going to be an attack from Petter Berlick. He needs to do something around the outside, try and do something to make this work, but he couldn't quite get far enough alongside. And it seems that he doesn't want to take the absolute maximum risk to get this, and now he's going to dive in, maybe into turn four, but we know the high, high line is where you want to be there. And yeah, he does, we can see he doesn't want to take the absolute maximum risk. He wants it to be a somewhat standard overtake. And I would say he is going to go for this if he gets the opportunity. But it's so difficult to get yourself in a position to do that consistently. So now he's got to build it up again, get the momentum going and get back towards Dennis. But as I said, Dennis in that final corner was mighty on that last lap. Just went around nicely, no sliding on the entry, he just went you know, perfectly around the corner and onto the power. So if he keeps on doing that, then he's going to have a chance to defend. Although Petter, look at look how close he's getting in this sector three. He's going to be close enough this time round. Not entirely sure. He's got a pretty decent exit here. Burlak like now right in the sit stream through the bank final corner. He's got the DRS open, but I don't think he's quite close enough for it on this occasion. No chance into turn number one. Three laps to go as we cross the line now. Who is going to take the race victory? It's honestly still in the balance. Still no idea what's going to happen. But I think Burlak is better off, or, or not better off, but at least should attempt at one point the dive down the inside into turn number four. We have seen it work in the past. It could work for him on this occasion. I don't see any harm in him just trying it in the final couple of laps. Yeah, he's going to try something, isn't he? He's been setting it up as he's still only four tenths behind. It's quite... Incredible, really, how close he's been for pretty much the whole stint so far. And you do wonder if his uh, tyres are maybe suffering a little bit, although he's staying very, very, very close to Dennis Jordan. So he obviously has a bit of tyre left in hand. And once again, getting very close. But can Dennis get a solid exit? Yeah, once again, Dennis is just so smooth through that final corner. It's incredible. Um, he's saved those tyres very nicely, however, Petter might have a look this time, although it doesn't look like he's actually using uh, the quality boost or anything, because he, that looks like a fairly calm, you know, just gentle DRS uh, coming up to him. Although behind Alex Siebel is batting with Janusz Brackshock, and uh, Alex has made that work through turn number one, two and three. And he's got himself up into fourth place, and he's now going to be coming for Mohamed Patel. So Brackshock drops down into fourth place as we are watching... Burlak slipstream all the way up the hill. He's going to try an unorthodox move on the back straight, maybe. He could indeed try that one. It's probably his best bet to just try anything at this point because we're approaching the final lap of this race. Don't forget, lap 71 of 72. The move starting to be made in the background. Can Burlak make any moves? Is he going to go for the all or nothing dive? It's probably not the most sensible thing to do, but when you're in the heat of the moment, when you can see the race victory in front of you, it is very tempting to just go for this one. 
come through the final couple of corners now. What's the exit? Jordan just misses the apex ever so slightly, and Burlak might have a chance here. Yeah, this is going to be it. This is his opportunity. Final lap of the race down the inside. What can he do? Or oh, he's going to have to go round the outside. Jordan's making him work for it. Round the outside, he's got to swoop. This is his opportunity if he's going to make it work. And he stayed really close, but couldn't quite keep around the outside. What about turn three or four? Is he going to make it work into? He's going to send it down the inside. Or oh, maybe not quite close enough. And I think that was really the opportunity for Petter, but he did want to risk it around the outside. Now he's got to work his way up. Final lap of the race, as we've mentioned, 72nd tour of the Zandvoort circuit. First time FSR has been here. What a race it has been, but can Petter make this work? Does he have the, enough tyres left even to challenge this? Or will Dennis Jordan make a mistake? Who knows, as we come now towards the end of Sector 2. And this is really the final DRS zone of the track. Can Petter make it work, or is Dennis going to be able to defend? I think Dennis is probably going to be okay into this chicane here. The final cut time, these guys have to negotiate it. But like, not quite the best exit. For the penultimate corner, it looks like Jordan might just be able to hold on. And now they come around the final corner. Is Petter going to have any sort of slipstream to the line? It is quite a way down. But Dennis Jordan, I think, is going to hold on to take his first ever victory in the Formula Racing Racing World Championship. Good defending from him. He was uh, given that lead when Yanni Simoncic had his disconnection, but he drove superbly to defend from Petr Berlak, who has made massive inroads. And we are seeing Jim Paris is trying to get past Jordi Sveers on the final lap as well. Oh, he's using a boost. He's going to get into the line, I think. Or oh, does Jordi have enough? It's going to be so close, but oh. Jordi just keeps it on the line for eighth position. What a final lap that was between those guys. But just to run you through the order, Dennis Jordan winning the race. Petr Berlik in second, Mohamed Patel in third, Siebel fourth, Brakshok fifth, Mrocek in sixth, Hoya having only done one qualifying lap as he couldn't even get on the surfer, getting in seventh. Good result from him. Uh, Jordi Sviers in 8th, Parisis in ninth, Van Der getting the last point and Eros Mashuli getting 11th. But Ewan, what a race that was. So close for Petr Berlek, but even then, second place with Jerne Simicic DNFing is a very good result indeed. Yeah, it definitely is drama all the way through that race and edge of your seat stuff right to the very end. The last lap, we still didn't know what was going to happen. Dennis Jordan managed to hold on for his first FSR victory and Petr Berlek closes that championship margin to just 11 points heading into the final couple of races that is going to be an extremely exciting prospect in the final couple of rounds but Simicic is going to have to come back very very strong in a few weeks time if he wants to take his second title in a row both of these guys fighting for their second title of course they've both won it in the past but Simicic the reigning champion is he going to be able to hang on to that crown we're honestly none the wiser on who is going to take it at this point. In fact, we're even less wiser on who's going to take it because Simicic has got absolutely nothing from this race and Burlak has got 18. So let's have a look. So com well, unofficial confirmation of the results because obviously there could be some potential um, post-race penalties. But yes, P uh, Petr Burlak, 11 points behind Yerni Simicic with only two races to go. Dennis Jordan moves up into third place. Followed closely by Hoyer, Siebel and David Mrocek. Uh, Joran Kuiko has missed the last couple of races. Not sure if he's going to come back for the final two. He is still signed up in that car currently. Then uh, Janis Brakshok in 8th, Patel in ninth, and Kalas getting 10th position. Jordi Zviz moves up into 11th um, in the Drivers' Championship. That is a great job from him. And Kira Birkov, who has now left the HM Yellow team in 12th place, hopefully. In a few months, we'll be able to, uh, to get an interview with these drivers because that is going to be interesting to discuss how that has been from them. Obviously, this track is quite uh, awkward and a bit difficult to to, uh, to make some overtakes. However, um, it certainly gave us a good, a good race. And as we said, two races to go and we still don't know who's going to win the championship. Yeah, you're going to have to tune in to the next two races to find out because uh, it's going to be a very exciting prospect at Matsusaka and Interlagos. And what better place to have a championship finale as well than Interlagos? It's a short season this season, of course, a bit of a super season, really, um, in terms of the entertainment. It's provided for us only 10 rounds, uh, which is half of some of the rounds we've had uh, in previous seasons. But it's uh, it's not disappointed in terms of the action. It is 
pretty much officially, uh, in fact it is officially a two horse race mathematically, but uh, we've got two fantastic drivers battling this one out now. Simicic and Burlak, who is going to take it? Well, it's a, it's a real 50-50 at this point, even though Simicic has got an 11 point margin, his confidence is going to be knocked by that one. His connection issues may be in the back of his mind for the next two races, and if that is playing on his mind while he's driving, then obviously it's going to be affecting him, but obviously he is a world-class driver, one of the best on R Factor 2, one of the best in sim racing, and so I'm sure he will be absolutely fine, and uh, we're going to have a fantastic finale. Yes, certainly. It's going to be a brilliant last two races. Obviously, two world champions going at it for a while. It has uh, been those two really fighting at the front. And we now have uh, Dennis Rodden for an interview. So we'll just jump in with him and see what he is going to do. And Dennis Jordan, your first ever victory in the Formula and Racing World Championship. How does that feel? Feels good. Thank you. Is that all you have to say? That was a surely a very stressful race. Uh, for you obviously you sort of got gifted the lead a little bit with Yenny, unfortunately having a, a disconnection. But uh, how was that uh, sort of with you having to defend for pretty much fifty laps? Um, yeah, I knew that I would lose the like the pole position at the start because from P1 you just can't see the lights. And also at the same time, you really want to be on the outside in turn three or turn four, whatever it is, to not lose more position. So I was happy to lose the position to Yane, but obviously shame what happened to him there. And then, yeah, after that, I don't know, it was like up and down race. Like at some points, it looked like I had quite a good pace advantage over Petter, but then at some point he was just in my mirror, full size again. So yeah, the, the last laps were quite stressful because I, I didn't really know how much engine I still had left because I, I couldn't see at this race. So yeah, I was just pressing the button and hoping that it would be enough. Yeah, well, he certainly did some good defending. Got very close a couple of times. Did you think he was going to get you or were you quite confident that you could defend? Um, well, the nice thing about racing guys like Petter is not only that they're really fast, but also really good. So I knew that he wouldn't do anything stupid. And I think on this track, it's just really, really tough to overtake. I think he had one really good chance in turn one on the on the inside there, where I really was like, whoa, he's going for this. But yeah, I think apart from that, it was pretty safe for me. I mean, obviously, I couldn't allow myself to do any mistake, which thankfully I did not. Well, you certainly did a good job. And I believe you might be leading the team's championship at the moment. Unfortunately, we don't have uh, the live standings for the teams, but I think you might be leading that as well. So with two races to go, is that really now your your main target is just to, to win the constructors? That has been the target all season. So yeah, if, if we are ahead now, then that's, that's nice. But still two more races to go. And yeah, let's see what we can do there. Well, uh, good luck next time out in Japan. We look forward to seeing you then. Thank you. Now, Petter Berlak unfortunately couldn't quite get the uh, the victory today. However, you certainly gained quite a few points on Yane Simicic. So, do you still think that you are in a in a good championship position to to take the victory? Well, definitely, because this was a bit of a gift today uh, with Yane's disconnect. So, when I saw that happen, I mean, the start wasn't too good. I, <laughs> I was like, okay, so what now? I just drive in a train and P4, P5 the whole race. And then uh, Yerni disconnected and my race kind of came alive. I I had the few chances, but it's so difficult to overtake that I didn't want to risk the engine because I knew if if I blow it, that's that's pretty much it for the championship unless something crazy happens. So I was trying to bide my time and push at certain moments but it didn't quite work i i never really got alongside and i to do something crazy in turn one is just way too risky yes i believe you're 11 points behind now so that's still a very um a good gain so you're gonna be just doing absolutely everything to try and maybe get a couple of pole positions because it seems that yerney has been ahead of you in a couple of the the more recent races um do you think that's maybe an area that you can improve in? Yeah, of course. Uh, I mean, my qualifying has been up and down historically. And this one wasn't an exception. Like the last race, it was really good. I didn't really have good quality pace at Nürburgring, but I did almost my PB. 
and here I was like two tenths off my PB. So, yeah, I guess the trend continues, but I'll certainly try. Well, good luck to you. If two races remaining, you still got a good chance. So, yeah, we'll see you next time. And uh, Mohamed Patel, you had a, a bit of a, a quiet race <laughs> behind uh, Petter. Did you really sort of think you could do anything, or were you just a little bit stuck there for most of the race? Um, I, I I think uh, pff, I don't know. It's just difficult with with two people in or with Petter with DRS. It's not not so easy to to have an opportunity to to pass. Um, I tried it with the tires, so I tried to go. First of all, I was thinking of pitting with 28 to go, but Dennis covered that off. Um, so then I did 26 to go and was like, okay, uh, let's see what happens. Unfortunately, we had uh, a couple of guys behind us as well that were pretty close, so I couldn't extend as much as what I potentially could do. But to be honest with you, um, with Peta in DRS all the time and trying to overtake, uh, um, it wasn't there was no real opportunity. I would get close a couple of times in the latter part of Sector 2. Um, but nothing in a position to to overtake uh, or really mount a challenge in any way, shape, or form. I was just hoping that he would overtake him and then pull away and then hopefully see what would happen um, or pick up the pieces of it if anything did happen. But nothing, nothing did. So, and I believe you're confirmed now for the final two races as well. So, what is really your plan going forward for them? Because obviously the championship as a driver is sort of out of the window because you joined a bit later in the season well what's really going to be your your sort of yeah plan for the last couple of races have fun and win <laughs> or try it, to win good one. well good luck with that and we'll see you next time out in japan i think you and that pretty much rounds up proceedings here for the uh eighth race of the season the ninth race second to last race of the season the penultimate race round number nine on the 26th of july will be there for the japanese grand prix before we get to the finale in brazil but this has been the formula sim racing world championship brought to you by 3d rap sim lab and imb raceway and until the 26th of july we wish you a very warm goodbye <laughs>